you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Mother Elizabeth Papazoglakis, and I serve as Associate Rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Friday of the sixth week of Easter. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson comes from the letter to the Ephesians, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved." and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Here ends the lesson. The author of this letter was calling out Gentiles who were dead in terms of the spiritual death they were experiencing from their trespasses and sin. When a person is dead, he or she has no contact with the living. When one is spiritually dead, there is no communication with God. That person is separated from God. In both the letter to the Colossians and this letter to the Ephesians, death is a metaphorical reference to the death and resurrection of Jesus as it relates to what Christians experience through the sacrament of baptism. In full immersion baptism, the person goes under the water as an outward and visible sign of being buried with Christ. Coming out of the water symbolizes being raised with Christ through His resurrection. Baptism makes a person a member of the body of Christ and therefore a new creation. Unless a person is baptized, he or she remains outside the body of Christ. Everyone goes through seasons of life outside the body of Christ. After reflecting on the dire past of believers and the condition of sinful humanity, the author now turns to the celebration of God's grace. God's love and grace is so profound that the author lists three undeserved things God has done for us. He made us alive together with Christ. He raised us up with Christ. And He has seated us with Him in the heavenly places. While being spiritually adrift, a person's only hope to bridge the divide between the human and divine is with the grace of God. Through baptism, we are made alive by the one who is himself alive, who is of course the living God, who gives life to the dead. This new life, power, and position demand that believers have a new set of values. In his letter to the Colossians, Paul said it this way, Since then we have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Christians become oriented toward a spirituality in heaven where Christ is as they become resident aliens to this world. 
This happens because a person's citizenship becomes secure in heaven, even heaven on earth. The author wants to make it abundantly clear that faith is a gift. No one can earn this gift. It is through God's grace that we receive faith. God created us to do the work that He has called us to do, which only happens when we put Him first in our lives as Lord and Savior. Let us pray. O oh Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of Your people who call upon You, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 o'clock or 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.